Section 1-2 Statistical and Critical Thinking The idea in this section is to provide an overview of the process when we're doing a statistical study. Our three main ideas are to prepare, analyze, and draw conclusions. Let's take a look at preparing. When we prepare, we might want to understand what the data that we are collecting mean to us. We want to take a look at our research question and try to understand the goal of our study. We want to examine how we are going to collect our data. We want to be objective and we want to minimize the biases. As much as we try to minimize the biases, there are still going to be some, so we have to be sure to identify them. Part of our preparation is identifying our sampling method. We want to make sure that our sample is representative of the whole population. We will study some sampling methods later on in this chapter. After we have collected our data, we want to analyze. Every analysis should begin with the appropriate graph. In collecting a large amount of data, it will be hard to process through all the information and graphs usually give us a nice snapshot of our data set. We will learn many other inferential statistical methods later on in this textbook. A lot of times we will rely on technology to find some values but more important will be our analysis of these values. Finally, we want to make a conclusion about our study. We will have to understand statistical significance. Statistical significance is achieved in a study when we get a result that is very unlikely to occur by chance. So some ideas of probability, the study of chance, will be important. We also want to be able to state our practical significance. We want to translate our information from statistics to something that everybody else might be able to understand. Here's an example. In a test of the Atkins weight loss program, 40 subjects had a mean weight loss of 4.6 pounds after one year. Using some formal methods, we can conclude that maybe the diet could be effective based on the fact that 40 people have lost an average of 4.6 pounds. However, is 4.6 pounds statistically significant? This is something that we're going to study a little bit deeper in inferential statistics. In any study, there are potential pitfalls. Sometimes we might have misleading conclusions. In a case that we're studying two variables, we might be able to conclude when two variables have some sort of correlation that one variable might cause the other variable to happen. An example might be a linkage between smoking and pulse rates. 
we have to be careful that sometimes our correlation is simply a correlation and it does not imply a causation between one variable to the other. Another potential pitfall might be a small sample. When we do a study, sometimes our results are based on a small sample. So when we base something on a small sample, we have to be careful and understand that our n, n is usually the letter that we use for our sample size, might be too small to be a statistically significant result. Sometimes our questions might be loaded. If you have a survey and your question is not worded carefully, your study might be a little misleading. For example, a survey might ask the question, should the president have the line item veto to eliminate waste? If you ask it in this way, you might get a 97% yes. But if you ask it in a slightly different way, should the president have the line item veto or not? then you might have a different result. Another potential pitfall might be the way you order your questions in your survey. Questions may unintentionally be loaded if you have some other questions before it that might influence the question. So, for example, if you ask a question about traffic contributing more or less to air pollution than industry, if you have traffic first, then industry second, you might have a result like this, where 45% would vote traffic and 27% would vote industry. If you reverse the order of your choices, industry first and then traffic, you might get a slightly different result. Another potential pitfall might be a non-response. This occurs when somebody either refuses to respond or is unavailable. Another pitfall might be some missing data. Sometimes we collect data and put it on a spreadsheet and either data gets lost or one of your subjects might not answer that particular data or might answer it incorrectly. So in those cases, you have to be careful about dealing with missing data. Precise numbers. A figure is precise and many people might incorrectly assume that it is accurate. Precise number can be an estimate and it should be referred to as an estimate, not as an accurate value. Percentages may also mislead. An example, if we have an airline that ran an ad claiming we improved 100% in the last six months, does that mean that they were perfect? Or does that mean the rating went from 1 to 2? So these are a few things that we can keep an eye on when you're reading statistics or when you're writing a report about statistics. There's many pitfalls to any statistical study and we just have to keep an eye out for them. This is the end of section 1-2.